we now have the ability to dynamically map custom fields from either internal forms or external tools like ConvertBox or anything else that can send a webhook. Let's jump into Thrive Automator and I'll show you how easy it is to map custom field data. So in our first example, we're going to go over how to use an internal form on your website. This is just a simple form that I built in Thrive Architect and I added a section here that asks what best describes your business and I put in a couple of options. So the first thing we have to do is click on our trigger and let's do that on a form submit. It's all the way at the bottom. Click on form submit. And now we wanna select the form on our website. I showed you in a previous video how you can customize that to find your forms pretty easy. And we're gonna click done and we're going to add an action. And here's where things get interesting. Because we're using Thrive Automator, we can just choose to take the data from that form and send it to our autoresponder, or we can choose to do something in the middle, like find or create an account for the user, grant them access to a product, unlock drip content, whatever we want to do, Thrive Automator makes that possible. So I encourage you to check out my previous video where I showed you how you can add them to a course. For this video, we're gonna keep it simple and just add them to our autoresponder. So that is going to be down here, add user and autoresponder. Now a quick timeout. Thrive only supports a handful of email tools right now for autoresponder custom fields. Here in their knowledge base, they've listed the following tools as the ones that support native support for custom fields. This is across all of their tools, whether it be Thrive Leads, Thrive Quiz Builder, and now Thrive Automator. So unless it's MailChimp, Aweber, ActiveCampaign, you know, and so on, you're not going to be able to do this method. But in case you do use one of these, I'm going to show it to you. And then I'm going to show you an easy workaround if you use another tool, like I personally do, like Fluent CRM. So for us, we're going to choose the autoresponder Active Campaign because Active Campaign and Thrive support custom fields. They have a really good integration. So what we're going to do with anyone that submits this form, we're going to add them to our list. For me, I'm just keeping it the master contact list. And right here, you see this gray bar that says field mapping. Go ahead and drop that down. And now you can see that we can map custom fields. So I created a custom field in my active campaign account called business type. It kind of matches what's going on in the form. If we jump back over to the form, you can remember I have uh, an e-commerce, a consulting, a courses, or an affiliate option for them to choose. So here I can choose insert dynamic data, this little icon on the right hand side. And here you have form data. So I can drop that down and you can see down here, mapping radio two, three, four, that's kind of an awful name, but what you can do is you can come back over to your, your form that you're editing and you can click on the form field and you can actually give it a name as opposed to it being radio field, blah, blah, blah. This could have been business name. So if you don't want to have to search and remember which field is which, just give it a name. It's probably a lot easier to do it that way. I should have done that. But now what's going to happen whenever a user fills out that form, they're automatically going to be added to this list. Given this custom field, and this custom field is going to be updated. And then I can choose to tag them and do whatever else I'd like to do. So that's really neat and super easy now to map data dynamically from a form to custom fields inside of an email autoresponder that supports it with Thrive. And like I said, you can also add other actions like starting them on a course or anything else that you wanna do on your site. But what if you use a tool that maybe Thrive doesn't integrate with as cleanly as ActiveCampaign. For example, I use Fluent CRM, which is internal to my website, but the custom fields are not totally supported yet by Thrive. Because I know many of you do use Fluent CRM and I use Fluent CRM for my email marketing tool, I'm gonna to show you how I use this new feature to update the custom contact fields that I have in Fluent CRM. Go into Fluent CRM to your settings, custom contact fields, and create a new custom contact field. For us, we'll just do a single line text and we'll call this industry and we'll click add. Now we need to create an incoming webhook. So let's go ahead and create a new incoming webhook. Let's give it a name. I'll call mine industry demo. You can call yours whatever you want. Choose the other things here like list tags and statuses that you want to apply to anyone that fills out this particular form. And then click create. In addition to our normal contact fields like first name, last name, we have custom contact fields and we need to note this key. For us, it was pretty easy. We called it industry, so it's industry. Next, go ahead and click update and click the copy button next to your webhook to copy your webhook URL. Let's come back into Thrive Automator and let's do what we just did before using a form on our website, but this time using send a webhook. So we're going to choose submits a form because we're still working with this form. I haven't yet shown you the third party tool way of doing this, but we'll get to that next. So we're gonna choose our form 
our form mapping test form and click done. And this time, instead of adding an autoresponder, because I want to show you something, if I click Fluent CRM here instead of Active Campaign and I go to Field Mapping, you'll note that all I have are name and phone. I don't have my custom fields because custom fields are not supported in Fluent CRM for this type of mapping. So let's delete Add an Autoresponder. We don't want to do it that way. Instead, we want to send a webhook. We're going to paste in the webhook URL that we just copied from Fluent CRM. We're going to leave post and form alone, but here are those fields. For fields, we want to choose the key that we just copied as well. For us, we remember it was industry. And then we're going to put the value, just like we did before, click the dynamic data, form data, and here's that mapping radio 234. That could have been whatever you named it. And then click done. Now, when the form is submitted, this form right here, and they choose their business type, not only are we going to get their name and their email, but we're also going to be able to put the industry into a custom field inside of Fluent CRM. So that wasn't actually pretty hard at all. All you had to do is make one extra step of taking a webhook and sending a webhook instead of just mapping it right there within the add to autoresponder field. But what if you don't want to use the form on your website? What if you want to use a third party tool like ConvertBox? Here in ConvertBox, I've made a test form for us where I'm gathering the person's name and their email, but I also have this additional field. And if I click on my form settings and I edit this field, you can see I'm asking the same question. What industry are they in? E-commerce, course, affiliate, or consulting? So I want to send this data to my website through Automator. So maybe I could create an account for them, add them to a course, but then take note of what industry they're in so that in my autoresponder, I can customize the emails that I send them. So let's come back into Automator. And this time we're not going to select form submit because we're external to our site now. Instead, we're going to choose incoming webhook. This should look familiar because in the previous video, we've already walked through how to do this. I'm going to copy my webhook URL and I'm going to go back into convert box, I'm going to click the form, form settings, integrations, I'm going to add an integration and I'm going to choose webhook and I'm going to paste in the URL. Now, what's really nice is that we have the ability to send a test. Before I do that, let's jump back into Thrive Automator and I want to click listen. Now we have a minute to go back into convert box and send our test. Test was sent successfully, so let's go back to Thrive Automator. And you can see here, we've sent over the following data using that listen feature. Now we don't need all of this. I don't need the convert box ID. I don't need the refer. I don't need the convert box name or the campaign name, but I want their first name. I want their last name, their email, and there it is, my key for industry. So I just need to make one little change to this. I wanna change email from text to email, and I'm done, so I just click done. Now what I can do, and this is kind of a two-parter here, I can add an action and I can either map this data to my autoresponder like Active Campaign by saying add user and autoresponder. And if I go into here to Active Campaign, you can see that I have the ability to map those fields to business type using webhook data this time. And I can map that for industry. Or if I don't want to do it this way and I want to send it to Fluent CRM, I add another action, send a webhook, and here we go. I just simply type in industry and I send it to webhook data for industry. Oops, selected both there. There we go, industry. And then that's how I send the data that way. Now, the reason I love coming through Automator is because we can add other actions like create an account on our website, add them to a course, and all of the other things that we've been learning about Thrive Automator. So hopefully you can see the ecosystem of Thrive is expanding rapidly to encompass all sorts of connectivity and the ability to integrate all the great tools that we use. If you have any questions about how to use Thrive Automator or any of these other tools that I've shown in the video, feel free to leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video.